Well, it's happened again, folks. The real world evil corp has somehow found a way to violate their age old, now abandoned principle of do no evil. Instead of oppressed dissidents and no no better social media users, YouTube has now taken aim at the loudest and whiniest bunch of us. And no, I'm not talking about conservatives. This time, Google has now taken aim at the information security community. Yeah, I'm serious. Google, the proclaimed pariah of information science, big data, and security, decided they would ban instructional information security content, citing it as dangerous material. In recent months, Google has taken aim at many in the parkour and urban exploration community, including Nightscape and Storer, demonetizing their accounts and citing the dangerous nature of their stunts. Even though all of the stunts only put themselves at risk, rely on their expertise in their fields, and contain frequent disclaimers not to attempt the stunt at home. This time, though, Google has put hackers in the crosshairs, with wording that seems to be hat agnostic. Instructional videos that teach viewers how to break the security of otherwise secure systems are the videos that YouTube is seeking to take off the internet. Let's pause and back up for a second. How did this begin? Cody Kinsey was set to release a video informing users how to set off fireworks over Wi-Fi this 4th of July. Did that sound any alarm bells to you? It doesn't matter because that's not even the video that started this mess. Cody returned to his channel to find that he was given the scornful community strikes, a punishment that indicates a content creator has at least once stepped foul of YouTube's oft-maligned content rules. The strikes? They weren't on Nazi propaganda, nor were they on videos of violent protesters beating journalists, both of which you can find on the platform. They were on how to hack Wi-Fi videos, instructional white hat explainers that teach users how to attack Wi-Fi for educational purposes. No warnings, no explanations, they just updated the rules and began enforcing them without anyone being the wiser. The fallout was immediate. The Register, Forbes, bloggers, and Twitter users rushed online to cover the outrage. Google employees and well-known personalities reached out to their contacts, seeking explanations and a quick fix to the situation. Other users mentioned that their channels had been hit before, and they had begun exploring alternate platforms. More on that later. By the end of the madness, luckily the Nullbyte channel had been reinstated, the fireworks video released, and a community was left seething in anger and confused as to what to do next. What next indeed? YouTube has a hell of a monopoly on content creation. They are unclear about their policies, have horrific history in unilaterally enforcing them, and are prone to mob rule when alternative media platforms fall foul of the PC police. They wield the demonetization staff with all-encompassing power, striking without impunity or explanation and taking away what is, in many cases, a primary source of income for content creators. The discussion about alternate plat platforms began again, but many missed the problems in this reaction. Most alternate platforms lack monetization entirely or aren't able to match the wages that YouTube offers for content. Many platforms are wholly unprepared for the level of traffic that many of these channels would bring, and their UI isn't as friendly as YouTube's. They don't have the history in the space to pull creators in, and even if they did, there's a fundamental challenge with their changing of platforms. You're not likely to bring your entire audience over from the initial platform. Migrating audiences will mean losing a sizable chunk of them in the move, which puts content creators' income further at risk. At the end of the day, the change has to happen on YouTube. There has to be a focus on reform, a focus on transparency, and a focus on freedom of expression and freedom to educate. Hacking is not a crime. Education is not a crime. YouTube treating both is indicative of a far more serious issue, that of a monopolistic private enterprise policing the public square. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and freedom to congregate all serve as cornerstones for modern democratic institutions, not the least of which is the public square that the internet has become today. YouTube policing educational content, the kind of content that drives society closer to a safe and secure utopia that bullshit visionaries at Google often cite as a company goal, is a massive intrusion and a terrifying precedent. We as hackers, content creators, social media personalities, and internet users need to take a stand to begin developing alternative platforms for free speech and educational content, all while pushing for a reform of the public square from the inside. I don't know how long I'll stay on YouTube. If a different platform pops up that mitigates the concerns I mentioned before, I plan to leave. We need to show YouTube that letting stakeholders and garbage philosophy police freedom of speech isn't acceptable in our public square. The decentralization of the internet starts with us. Don't let this issue fall silent. Education is not a crime. Thank you to all of the other content creators who have spoken out on this issue, specifically Live Overflow and Nullbytes and a lot of the Google employees as well as other 
social media personalities who have spoken out about this. This is something I'm pretty passionate about, as you can probably tell. So I, I am really glad that people are talking about this. The only thing I do hope is that people don't fall silent on it and that they remember that this is how YouTube, this is how they call their platform. This is how they decide what kind of agenda that they're going to push. And to say that they're allowed to just create rules in the night and start enforcing them without informing their content creators of why or without offering any kind of nuance on how they're going to police the platform in the future, that's a dangerous precedent to set, especially considering the importance of YouTube and other Google platforms in the public square. Thank you guys for listening and uh, just don't stay quiet on this.